Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane, and I'm joined today with my special guest, Magenta Pixie. How are you doing today, Magenta? I'm good. Thank you very much, Shane, for inviting me on your show. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure to have you all the way from the UK. So what's weather like there today? Pretty nice? Pretty good, actually. It's been, it's been nice for a while, which is... Uh, rare for the uk yeah we've had some sun <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it has been really hot and it, um, a lot of people over in uh, europe was telling me that it's fine they finally got a break it was horribly hot but now it's actually getting nice and that's correct way. it was a bit too hot early august and it's quite nice now mm. That's really cool. I, I do have uh, all of Magenta's um, links down below so you guys can, we're going to be talking about our new book, which is awesome. A lot of synchronicities. It's a big book too. Um, it's got a lot of information. I'm about a little over a third the way. I think it said I was 36% the way through it. And uh, it's so many synchronicities, so many confirmations of things that I like to call them knowings, things that just sort of pop in my head. And I think they're my idea. And then only later to find out that, no, no, you were getting this from a higher source. And I think we're all channeling all the time the way Magenta does. It's just we don't realize it. It's not as obvious to us that we might just get it as an idea in our mind. And then uh, later on, you'll be reading a book like Magenta Pixie's new book. And you'll hear the same thing. You're like, oh, oh, I actually got that from a higher source. So that's, uh, I've gotten so many chills and synchronicities and confirmations. I absolutely love the book. Um, uh, great work on that. And I was going to ask you when I was reading it, it's so deep and profound that um, how many times have you actually read it? I mean, did you edit it yourself? Did you have to read it a bunch? Because I can imagine as a scribe writing these things down, you don't get it all in one pass either, right? Absolutely. No, it took me about six weeks, which is pretty quick, actually, as my other books took much longer. It was a very intense period. I was getting downloads constantly, literally from the minute I woke up, well, prior to waking up, waking up, downloads all day and again all night. So what I do is I write everything out organically as it comes through spelling mistakes and all because the information comes so fast that often I can't type quick enough uh, to keep up with the flow of dialogue that's coming in. So sometimes the editing is, is quite a big job. It can look like a bit of a jumbled mess when it first comes out. So that all gets passed to my partner and he edits everything for me really, really well and goes over every word with a fine tooth comb. He doesn't obviously change any dialogue. He would just look at grammar and uh, punctuation and then he passes everything back to me and then I will go through again. And if anything comes through extra, that gets added on, which is a bit of a pain for my partner because then he's got to go through it all again. <laughs> so it gets back to me and then it goes back to him. So it has sort of three edits. And as for me reading the material, obviously before the book is released, I need to read it right through. So I usually read it at least three times, sometimes four. Um, A, because I want to make sure there's no errors there, but B, to read it myself because the information comes through as an unprocessed organic download and then I process the information myself. So I need to read the information to be able to understand it. It would be no good you interviewing me and asking me questions. If I hadn't processed the material, I'd be saying I've no idea <laughs> because I wouldn't have it in my own head, even though that came through. Anyone who's channeling kind of knows how that works. So, uh, and it's really interesting because I'm fresh to it at the moment because uh, I think I read it four times prior to sale and I've read it once since sale so five times um, but I've been away from it for a while I kind of took August off if you like not completely because downloads were coming through about the lion's gate but other than that I took some time off that intense focus because the intensity of writing the book was so um, all consuming to the point where 3D was taking a back seat, you know, 3D things like shopping and, and sp speaking to my family <laughs> and housework <laughs> just took a back seat because it was, a, it was a zone of intensity. The nine were there the whole time. So I've needed, as we all do, it's a rare person that can remain in that zone all the time. You need to come back and go 
down into 3D, if you like, just to assimilate everything. So I've taken that hiatus, the nine call it, and haven't looked at the book um, for the last six weeks to two months. So I, I'm somewhat fresh to the material after having taken uh, a step back from it. I have an interesting question for you before we get into the book. Um, when you're uh, when someone calls or contacts you about an interview, are you able to use the nine and say, hey, is, you know, is this an outlet I should take? Or do you use them like in everyday life or things like that uh, to know sort of direction? Or is it just pretty much information like you receive in the book? No, I do use them for everyday uh, information, sometimes incredibly mundane stuff, really. But when it comes to interviews, I usually will look at um, the um, request for an interview and get a feel for that energy. And I usually make that decision myself from what I would call intuition, resonance, empathy, a psychic connection. Whereas the connection with the nine is that sort of higher self download. It's exactly the same thing the nine tell me. But if you look at the, um, the, the wheel, the sacred wheel that the nine talk about in this directional model, then when you are intuitive or psychic and you're looking at something that you are seeing from your own intuitive perspective, that's a forwards, backwards move. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a, a sort of um, a horizontal energy. And when you draw energy down from the higher self, from the guidance system, the nine, that's a vertical energy. So it feels different to us. And you could call that uh, psychic awareness, empathy versus or as well as mediumship channeling but from the nine's point of view it's exactly the same thing it's just perceived differently by us so yes i usually make this decision myself but sometimes on rare occasions the nine will say yes you need to well that will usually occur before a request actually it'll be something like someone's going to ask you to be interviewed within the next two days you need to say yes to this person or you know maybe say no to this person which is incredibly rare that i get that information but i do ask them about mundane things i'm currently planning uh my hand fasting stroke wedding to my partner which is next march congratulations and, thank you and uh, yeah i'm asking the nine but i'm not really asking them things like what dress shall i wear or which flowers shall i have obviously i i make that uh decision myself but i have been asking them things like is this a distraction and is marriage a good thing for us to do in the first place? And um, what's the difference between a non-legal ceremony and a legal ceremony? Should the two be connected together? So I ask them things like that because it's the questions I have in my own life. And they talk to me, they've talked to me a great deal actually about that subject. It's been quite interesting. So yes, I do confer with them when I myself am analyzing things about my own life i do remember one time years ago when i first started channeling but uh, it was an experiment i was living with my brother and it was when, when we i first connected to my spirit guide white spirit and i remember him saying shall we ask white spirit if he can talk to us about mundane things as an experiment so i remember asking white spirit how do we cook this recipe can you help us to cook? And I, they actually, he, at the time it was one spirit guide, one entity opened a doorway and allowed this chef to come in who had lived on this planet and he passed over and he was a very well-known chef. He didn't give me a name and he was teaching me how to cook. So it can be done, but it really depends on where you are. So if you're a learner, a beginner, all sorts of entities will come forward to assist you or rather one entity presents itself in many, many forms, in many, many levels to assist you. But when you get to a certain level, sometimes you might be um, responded to with a bit of silence or laughter or, the nine won't say to me, sort this out yourself. You know, they wouldn't be so blunt, but what they might do is I see them and then they, they do this as if to say, you do it. <laughs> that sort of thing yeah uh, that's really nice that's nice to have that connection like that because and I, and I think we all have intuition to a certain extent but um, 
I mean, do you have to worry about uh, messages? Uh, do you have to just trust your heart in the message? Does it come through the heart and you know that it's sort of a positive message? Is that something you have to worry about as far as entities that maybe don't have your best at, at heart when they give you information? Or, or do you have the protect, protection of the nine? How does that work from your perspective? Now it's instant for me. I'm fully aware of where that resonance is, whether it's service to self, service to others, higher vibrational. I know where it is because I've done this for so long. But in the early days, that would be something I would have to be very conscious of. And you must do this. If you are channeling, you are expressing. I mean, one way of putting this is you are opening up and drawing all sorts of beings into your reality from all different levels, both malevolent and, uh, you know, benevolent. From another point of view, you are expressing different aspects of yourself um, in different ways, in different levels. And that can be um, heart opening bliss energy. And it can also be trauma and uh, subconscious buried negative experiences. It's the same thing. So in the early days, one does need to work consciously with that alignment, that testing. And I, I've often um, talked about a very simple way you can do this. If I were to say to you, for you to say to me, my name is Shane. When you say my name is Shane, or rather my birth name is Shane, because your body knows you're speaking truth, you will have this internal resonance and it will feel right. It will feel balanced because you're speaking truth. My birth name is Shane and it will feel right. If you say my birth name is Robert or um, John, there will be an imbalance. You will feel this. It's a very basic way of working out that resonance. So in those early days of psychic awareness, mediumship channeling, that's something one should really work on. And you can work with um, communication directly to the higher self as well, saying things like, are you of Christ consciousness? Um, do you come in Jesus's name? Uh, you know, you, you can use anything, whatever means a higher, um, pure, loving service to others energy. Are you part of the unicorn frequency? Um, anything that, that is of that energy to you because it's so intertwined with your own belief system. But then after a while, after several years, you practice. It's an instantaneous thing. It's like you see, you hear, you feel all at once at the same time. So if an entity comes in, I know whether it's a benign or not. I know if it's a negative entity or a positive one. And if it's a negative entity, I usually, not always, I usually know why it's there. And I instantly thank it for being there because the negative entities are here to teach us as much as the positive ones are. So I always give gratitude to the negative entities as well. If I don't know why they're there, I still give gratitude and then I'll work out, okay, why did you come? So it's about that resonance. It's taking that, my name is Shane, my name is John, to the next level and the next level and the next level. That's what you're doing. You're simply working with that balance, that resonance. So, uh, but yes, it's instant now, most of the time. I like that. Yeah, that's an easy tool that anybody can use. Um, just using your own name. And, and I've heard you mention that before. So yeah, that's a great tool to, to share because I know a lot of people are coming into more of an awareness of the spiritual things that's going on all around us and we're wanting you know we're wanting to test the waters a little bit and yeah this is a great way to to do that so i appreciate that um okay so a lot of us woke up to the mandela effect and uh it, it wouldn't be a complete show unless i mentioned it because for a lot of us we're like what the heck is going on here it took me about a year to see it um, I'd heard about it, you know, and I was like, ah, I, don't, I don't trust my memory. I, that's why I say anybody can see this that gives it a moment because I totally don't trust my memory and I was able to see it happening. And I think you just have to look and find that one thing that you are sure of the way it was, typically from your childhood or something, because uh, Isaiah eleven six, the lion and the lamb scripture was this famous scripture that I I'd read many times as I read my way through the Bible. It's like a scenic place on the route, you know, on a, on a while you're reading through the Bible, you come across and you're like, oh, here's that scripture, the lion and the lamb scripture. And that's the lion or the wolf and the lamb. And it's like, what the heck? And uh, then I had Rodin's thinker statue as a kid on my desk, saw it every day, drew it many times. And to see it's under the chin where it used to be on the forehead for me growing up, that was a huge wake up call. So what's been your experience with the Mandela effect? How'd you hear about it? 
Uh, well, somebody wrote to me actually and said, what's the Mandela effect, Magenta? Can you ask the nine to speak on it? I wasn't familiar with the term Mandela effect. I was familiar with the phenomenon, but I didn't have a name for it. Just timeline jumping, I guess, was the nearest thing. So when I researched the Mandela effect and found out what that was referring to, then I could communicate with the nine about it. And it is a deep and complex subject that would take far longer than our session mm. together to explain. But what I would say in a nutshell is um, the Mandela effect is a phenomenon that has always been there. It is part of reality. We time jump all the time. But because our memory is locked into this um, sort of third dimensional framework of this particular DNA configuration that aligns with a third dimension, our memory goes along with the linear experience. That's what happens. As we start to raise that DNA frequency, that DNA code into more of a fifth dimensional and beyond um, reality framework, if you like, we have more access to memory and that goes beyond linear therefore we see more than one timeline therefore we can we know when something is out of sync with the memory that we have so we spot what's happening so for example say years ago i remember reading a, a children's book that was about a pink teddy now if i'm in the 3d memory linear time frame when that timeline jumping takes place and you are moving to a timeline where that story was about an orange teddy, your memory will be that of the story being an orange teddy because you're in a 3D time frame. You're in a linear reality. You don't remember the jumps. But when you change that DNA frequency to the 5D timeline and beyond, you will say, hold on a minute. That story was about a pink teddy, not an orange one. You have the memory there. Now that's the normal uh, organic timeline jumping uh, experience that's part of reality as we ascend through these levels, through, through these dimensions. But as many uh, people know, uh, much of these reality constructs have been hijacked. So there is a negative agenda technology that works in a um, Mandela effect way as a control tool that's also been used uh, as well in order to um, create specific outcomes for Earth that those who have that technology want. All of that is changing because if the organic technology, if the organic um, natural way things are, is not being experienced on a critical mass level, then those who have the technology to do that are going to be, if you like, energetically stronger. As we wake up and change our DNA structure into the 5D template and those memories jump beyond linear and we know we're timeline jumping, all of a sudden we have a critical mass of individuals using and working with the organic technology, which makes the, uh, the infiltrated technology start to not work properly, if you like. So the more we wake up, the more that or that um, infiltrated technology, it all goes wrong and can't work anymore because we are the ones working with the overall timeline for this planet. So right now, the Mandela effect is a positive thing, even though you may still experience um, a control uh, sort of um, reality that is becoming less and less and less to the point where the majority of star seeds are very very aware as to what's control and what is organic and those that aren't are becoming aware all the time so the mandela effect which is just one name for this timeline jumping phenomenon is uh, a good thing a positive thing and i i do have a chapter on that it's um in the book and i think it's um it's actually called immortality and the mandela effect so the nine are talking about how you can use the mandela effect for your own ascension process again a really deep subject but all in the book when you understand how to um how it works 
when you get into the center of this perceived sacred wheel, this directional model for our energy system, you control the Mandela effect, if you like. It, it isn't a phenomenon that just happens to you. You get in the driving seat of it. And, mm. you know, your name is Shane, so the Mandela effect is Shane's effect. Yeah? Right. It's Shane's reality, Shane's timeline um, experience. You control it for you. That's, that's what the whole books are written for. That's why the Mandela effect is such an important subject. All the books that the nine have have transcribed or i've transcribed from them the ones they've downloaded to me is about controlling your reality about controlling the bigger reality that's beyond the linear so the mandela effect becomes simply um an organic natural way reality works that you ride if you like you you don't use it as such you just learn how to to be friends with it it's the same thing as learning to walk you know the physical body learns to walk the energetic bodies learn to use these timelines and this quantum reality that's part of the light body that's part of 5d that's that awesome so that that actually goes back into something i was reading in your book where it was explaining how uh we're moving from 3d to 5d um all the time um depending on sort of our emotions and the feelings we have and uh, our activities that we're involved in and that we're moving sort of uh, depending on that you're, you're we're moving since we're in this transition phase i think you refer to the fourth dimension as like the rainbow bridge so we're sort of passing backwards and forth between the two depending on our resonance and so that's why more people are starting to see this mandela effect then and uh, Absolutely, yes. that makes a lot of sense because it seems like the people that are seeing it are more awake and aware and of, you know, they're more in this yeah. group that we're in here, just sort of like, hey, you know, we're supposed to be doing something here, star seeds, and just realizing that we're here yeah. for a purpose and all that. So that's wonderful that you bring that up. So can you speak more about this going in between um, 3D yes. and 5D? When you're in the fourth dimension, then you might experience the Mandela effect in still a linear sense. So it might be a case of, I remember reading this book about a pink teddy bear, and now this pink teddy bear is orange. What's going on? This is not right. This must be some terrible um, control, uh, big lie. Uh, in the fourth dimension, it's still somewhat linear, and it's difficult to see the unification of it the the unified nature it's difficult to see the organic process but it's the first step beyond the linear 3d reality and, and the fourth dimension is is somewhat misunderstood within the spiritual community because it's often cited to be such a um, confusing place and quite a dark place which it is but it's also a beautiful place as well it's your training ground it's your training ground so on a linear level you move th from 3d you go into 4d and you spend many many years there if you like and then you go into 5d on a linear level but what we're actually experiencing is a non-linear reality bec because our dna is moving into these constructs these configurations that match these different dimensional fields and so we're experiencing 3d 4d 5d all at the same time so when i say that's why the Mandela effect is important to understand, because if I say to you, um, you're experiencing 3D right now, and then you'll go to 4D and be there for many, many years. And it could be thousands of years before you get to 5D. That's the truth from a linear level. So, you know, you can't get to 5D for thousands of years and you might not get to 4D for hundreds of years or you might have just got there, but you will be there for hundreds of years. That's a linear truth. But we're not linear anymore. So the truth from the, 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 the reality that we're experiencing right now on mass with this ascension process is you're in 3D, 4D and 5D. You're experiencing multiple timelines. That's why you're experiencing the Mandela effect, because you're jumping timelines, but you're not just jumping them. You're superimposing yourself into 
three, if you like, three, four and five. I mean, it's more than that, but for simplicity's sake, you are superimposed within 3D, 4D and 5D simultaneously. So it seems like one moment and it is one moment because you're in the unified state, which is 5D. And that's what your new configuration within your DNA is, is, is aligned to. But really, you are thousands of years in the future. Depends that's, on the perspective. That's amazing. And that was one of the things in the book that uh, I really enjoyed was the fact that the nine are really you from the future in a, from our linear perspective. Isn't that correct how it works? That is correct. Yes. It's amazing because I look at the nine and think, wow, am I going to look like that in millions and billions and trillions of years? You know, they are ascended light beings. They, ha they, d they don't have physical bodies anymore. You know, they can instantly transport themselves through realities through thought they are pure thought but of course yes that's where we are going but when we look beyond the linear that is where we are so from a linear perspective from the 3d perspective the nine and me in the future it's beyond trillions of years i can't even think of a mathematical number to explain how far in the future it is but from the true reality you are there now so the nine are me and this merge that's what's happening. That's the 3D, 4D, 5D at once. That's magenta and the nine at once. So as I speak now, I speak to you as magenta pixie. I also speak to you as the nine and I shift my energy. So I can say to you right now, I am magenta pixie, I'm in 3D. I can also say to you, we are the white winged collective consciousness of nine speaking through magenta pixie. And our energy is within her and merged with her. And she is a separate being to us. So we jump, do you see how we jump around, how it's right. so instantaneous? That's simply a DNA configuration change. That's all that is happening. It seems so wild and amazing and wonderful to us, but the nine repeatedly explained to me that this is the organic divine right for all humans. And it's been something on a linear level that has been taken from us or we've been delayed in coming into or we've been um prevented from coming into the many many different ways of looking at that and now we are flourishing into this and many of us are in that state now 3d 4d 5d and we we move in and out as i said to you i've come fresh to this information because i haven't been communicating um that much with the nine and when i have communicated with them it's been quite linear um 3d questions but and I, before i did the interview actually i was actually talking to my friend she's probably in the chat room i said i'm really worried about this interview with shane because i think i've forgotten everything i haven't been in that zone with the nine for like a month to six weeks i've sort of taken some time off i've been out with my grandchildren and watching the cinema and going to the park and doing shopping and i've been really 3d and the nine spoke to me and they explained to me and they said to me you say this you say this to Shane and those that listen because this is important for everyone to know. And what they explained to me is, they said to me just before we spoke, they said to me, it's like having a guitar. Say you play the guitar. When you play that guitar, you're strumming the strings and you're playing a tune. You are playing that guitar. You and the music are one. So you're a guitarist. You put that guitar down, you put it away in a cupboard and you don't play it for three months. And while you're walking around in those three months, you're not a guitarist, you're not playing a guitar, you're not making any music. Does that mean when you come back to your guitar three months later and you pick it up that you've forgotten everything and you have to sit there and think, oh no, I need to go back to guitar lessons because I don't know what these strings are and I don't know how to play a chord. No, you pick up your guitar, your memory, your creativity, your learning kicks back in and you go back to the time that you were in when you first learned the guitar and the memory comes back and you start to play a tune and it's exactly the same. So I've, I've had a lot of people write to me saying, I've lost my 3D energy. Um, I can't meditate anymore. I can't see my guides anymore. It's kind of gone. Um, what do I do? How do I get this back? And I always say, this is normal. It's never permanent. It's temporary. It's a hiatus because we're moving like this, you know? So we go through these peaks of high energy downloads where we're 3D, 4D, 5D all at once and we're everything and then we come back down. And there, there are two ways of looking at it. One is the collective movement. So we all move together like this at the same time. But also there's another wave, which is our individual movement. So it's like these two waves intertwining as we move individually and collectively. 
I like that. And that has to do, I guess, uh, in part with energies coming in, right? Cosmic rays, don't they? I mean, we've got a lot of outside external factors that can affect that as well, right? Oh, goodness me. Yes, absolutely. The cosmic factor, the alignment of the planets, the sun, the solar flares, the collective movement of humanity, the different um, uh, sort of seasons within that wheel. I'm talking about the autumn equinox, spring equinox, the solstices. Um, all of those things play a part in this wave process, you know, that we and so it's more than two lines. We've got the collective movement like this, and then we have our individual movement like this, and then we've got the cosmic movement like this, and everything sort of moves in a linear sense, all in different lines. But then when we move into 5D, that line doesn't do this anymore. It kind of does this, and it's all intertwined and unified. But that's what's happening to the DNA. So the DNA is no longer this, you know, double helix, if you like. It's the triple helix, and then it, it's beyond the triple helix, and then it's the infinite helix. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do an actual helix in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in five D, right? <laughs> yeah. So okay, so that's really wonderful, and that really brings back to uh, the way um, I sort of woke up to the Mandela effect. I sort of snapped out of it. It seems like uh, it was in spring, uh, the spring equinox of. 2017 last year and I, and it was I don't know the shift in that energy it just all clicked and then I've heard about other people that it happens in that September uh, the fall equinox or whatever so there's something going on with that because I definitely see there's like a peak of people who wake up to what's happening at those times and probably yeah. in the solstices as well but I just didn't notice that you know but definitely um a number of people have noticed during the uh, equinox and that's sort of strange because it's hard to imagine that planets and the sun and the movement and all that can really have that big of an effect and i know a lot of people in the new age community really look at that and they talk about well this planet's in uh, retrograde and you know that's all new to me or whatever but i can definitely see now as my awareness is increasing how all of those things really tie into all of the energies and adding to the peaks and the valleys of what we're already dealing with personally and as a collective. And there's a lot yeah. of information to learn about this whole thing, you know? <laughs> well, if you see the equinoxes and the, and the solstices, it, it's there's one way of looking at it. If you, you see these waves that I'm talking about, these individual waves of collective experience, individual experience, timeline jumping, Mandela effect, so they're going along like this, and then there comes a time where all these waves meet and they collect in the middle in this little sort of whirlpool. And that the, the nine call a node point, which is where all timelines converge together. So it's also a convergence point. It's also known as a stargate. And those times are the equinoxes and the solstices, uh, also to a certain extent not quite as powerful but sometimes are the s bats the, the full moons and then you have um alignments like the lion's gate you have eclipses they all come together and create these convergence points so at that time it's like the the um the energy if you if you look at it as a pulse coming in from the galactic core the energetic frequency within that pulse ramps up at that time or you could look at it as a dna configuration because quantum entang entanglement is um, something occurring in more than one place so if you look at everybody's dna they're all in different places because they're all inside our bodies but really they're all in the same place so they all sync together at the same time when that person is receptive to it meaning they've moved out of the 3d configuration so even if you feel that you were once in 4D and you've experienced 5D and now you feel you're totally 3D and your last six months have been, it's, hard, it's unlikely to be that long, but say it has been, no synchronicity, nothing going on, you're not feeling the energy. That's always temporary because once you have moved out of the 3D configuration, non-linear, it, you'll always be out even though you feel that you're back in 3D. It's the same thing as once you play a guitar, you even if you get a bit rusty and haven't picked up a guitar for 20 years, you're going to remember how to play it. So it's the same thing. All you need to do is practice a little bit and that will come back. So once, you're, once you've once you created that configuration and it's a brainwave state at the same time, so your brain remembers what it once did. So like, for example, reading the Infinite Helix, 
if I feel that I'm, I've come out of uh, 5D and 4D and I'm in 3D and I'm a bit mon mundane in my experience and I feel, you know, there's not a lot of communication there with the nine. I don't feel triggered. I've, I'm getting no downloads. Where's that beautiful intensity of energy and that synchronicity and magic has kind of gone flat. This, it triggers me back and it, it will with you, not just my book any book any and it's not just books it's music it's art it's any creativity with the intention the, the original seed point to create activation so this is why i'm saying i've been away from this because i've i've deliberately um taken a, a hiatus i've made an intention to do that and i've decided in september i will return to that intensity so i've created the intention so i can read this and you know within a few pages that comes back, but I didn't do that. I didn't use the infinite helix, but talking to you, speaking to the nine prior to us talking, you and I are creating a convergence point between us two. So my individual reality going like this and your individual reality as Shane doing this, you and I have created a reality that's come together. We've created a convergence point, a node point for this particular interview. That's why a lot of people in the new age will say, it will happen in divine timing. And that can annoy some people because they're like, oh, what does that mean? But it simply means these node points come together when the energies converge. So that's why it's divine timing. So from one perspective, it's all been planned before you were born. From another perspective, you are creating it within your reality as you go along. And we create these little mini node points. So you and I have created a mini node point for this interview. And yet there are these global node points, for example, the summer solstice or winter solstice or equinox. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and that includes all of you in the chat joining in with us. And oh, uh, yes. <laughs> that's the one thing I've noticed with these live streams. And that's why I started doing it is because I can feel the energy of everyone coming together like this and uh, just talking and spending time together and getting a break from the 3D world of having to deal with you're looked at as crazy or whatever. And we can come together and sort of relax in a way and share our thoughts and our experiences and all that. And, and I've been dealing with these ups and downs as you talk to about, you know, like days where I'm like, I can't even drink coffee. I'm already zinging. I don't know what the heck's going on. And, and I'll feel like I already, you know, it's different than coffee, but it's still that stimulated feeling of really going high. And then, um, other times I'll feel like in the middle of the day, I'll feel like, oh my gosh, I just got to lay down. I feel like I was drugged or something all of a sudden. And then I'll sleep, take like a 30 minute nap and wake up and I'll feel great. And I don't really know if that's downloads happening, but it's so strong. It's, it's definitely different than I've ever experienced. And this has been going on the last couple of years, I would say, but even more strongly in the last few months. And that's very much the DNA activation and the DNA changes moving from this carbon based to crystalline based configuration. So moving into your light body, if you like, and you will have these periods of intensity and it isn't like a mania as such. It's a charge. You are literally being charged. So it's beautiful. It, it, it should feel exciting. Um, and then the, the sleep is not a laziness. It's not, oh, I can't be bothered. It is a drawing you into a deep sleep, almost as though you start dreaming before you fall asleep. That is the activation. It's a, an intensity of energy because you are merging the daytime with the nighttime. You are merging the sun with the moon. You are merging the dark and the light. You are coming into a balance point. So your existence within your waking state and your existence within your sleeping state will become one. And what you're actually doing, if you want to look in a sort of brainwave state, is looking at the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain. Instead of perhaps using one hemisphere rather than the other, you're bringing balance within the hemispheres. And that, that little corpus callosum in the middle of the brain is, is the uh, rainbow bridge, fourth dimension, if you like switching you could you could perhaps call the left the third and, and the right the fifth that would be the patterning it's the same with the subconscious mind and the conscious mind so they are balancing so your subconscious mind is able to step into place equally with the conscious mind while you're awake in 3d your conscious mind is at the fore when you're awake and your subconscious mind is working in the background and when you go to sleep that changes that's 3d but in 5d 
you are in both all the time. So you can have a conscious mind and subconscious mind sitting together when you're awake. So basically you are channeling, if you like, and when you're asleep, you'd be in a lucid dream or an out of body experience. That is very much um, what is happening to us. It's one of the experiences we will have uh, as we change our DNA structure. That's awesome that you mentioned that because I've noticed um, I've had to move from doing regular meditation where I sit quietly with my eyes closed because it, it had come on so strongly I'll end up having to take a nap. It just, it's, it's, it, I'll get that heavy feeling that I was just talking about. And uh, I found that, and you mentioned this in your last videos and um, from the nine, they were saying to just don't stop yourself from daydreaming. So a lot of the times, instead of meditating, I'll just go out and I'll sit outside, I'll listen to the birds and I'll just enjoy nature. Um, instead of trying to sort of get in my head or quiet everything, I'll just be in the, just try to be in the moment instead of, you know, trying to quiet everything, just enjoying nature and the trees and the wind blowing and just really paying attention to the now. And then I actually feel more energized from doing that, um, sort of just daydreaming than I do from, um, trying to sit quietly in my room and uh, close my eyes and just, you know, that usually brings me down. So just a little tip for anybody else, because when I heard that in your last video, I'm like, oh, that's what I do. I've, I've been actually doing that. So that's another one of those synchronistic things that I just felt like I just did it for my own idea. But, you know, then I hear you say this and I'm like, oh, it's like I got that was a little download I got and I had no idea, you know. Yeah, the nine call that the daydream, very important, because that is when you're balancing the conscious and the subconscious together. It's so important and children are sitting in school and they are going into the daydream because they're so in, in, in tune with these energies. And then you have the teachers stop daydreaming, open your books, get on with your whatever lesson they're doing. And it, really a child should be left to flourish and in an organic society that's living harmoniously with earth and cosmic energies, the children will not be interrupted in their in their process. The children, there, is, there isn't schooling in, in a harmonious planetary system like there are on other planetary systems and in our, in our potential future, depending on which timeline we are heading towards. Because <laughs> we, we are heading towards a collective timeline and we're also heading towards individual timelines as well. So there are variations of, the, of each timeline so we can create our own futures. So um, yes, it's important not to interrupt our children from the daydream. I remember that happening to me so much. I would daydream all the time and I would constantly be told off and sent out the room for daydreaming when I should have been working. I'm glad I experienced that now because now I understand how that interruption in childhood can actually interrupt that that flow and how important it is to have that if you look at home educated children who are being home educated um, by consciously aware parents you will see how um, relaxed they are uh, with their own thought process because they're free to go into the daydream. They are not interrupted because their parents are consciously aware of their energies. And some school systems like the Steiner system and some also the Montessori system. So anyone who's looking at schools for their children, Steiner, Waldorf, Montessori, home education at the moment are kind of the top three <laughs> for star seed children. Just going off track there. No, that's awesome. And yeah, I got in trouble for daydreaming all the time. I don't know. I, it was even an issue on parent teacher day. It was like, he just daydreams a lot. He stares out the window and like, I like looking at the trees and the birds and stuff. Well, he'll be alone, you know. But yeah, it's, uh, I think that's probably uh, something for all of us that we've, or many of us anyway, that we've had to deal with. And they do the, do that. They try to refocus you back on what's going on. And, and I think, you know, on a higher sense, a higher level, we're actually learning at those times and they're actually stopping the more important learning, you know, because that gets into like the art and the music that they don't do enough of because it's everything's so left brain based. And when you're daydreaming, you're in that right brain. So it's like art and music. It's in that more creative part of your brain now that, you know, you're sort of making me put all this together. So, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. And I will say that with the star seeds, as in those who are, um, destined within their life plan to awaken within this this lifetime, this part of this ascension consciousness awakening. Those star seeds, they wouldn't have been, uh, they wouldn't have been 
shut down through uh, infiltration of their daydream. They will have always come back to it. No matter how many times a teacher or parent will have said, stop daydreaming, they will have come away from that daydream and focused, but they will have constantly gone back to it. Um, there's, there's like a, there's a certain genetic um, code that's online for star seeds where there's a knowing of their process and everything becomes a rehearsal or training ground for what they're going to do in the future. So on the one hand, it's a really negative thing to do to a starseed child, but for those who are adults now and starseeds and awakened, they wouldn't have actually been prevented within their growth overall because they were supposed to experience that so that they would understand it now. Um, but that, that gene that they incarnated with would always bounce them back to that place where the subconscious and the conscious balance together. So they, the, no teacher would have been able to shut them down. They, they're too strong in their uh, knowing that daydreaming is right, <laughs> if you like, and uh, creativity. One of the things in the beginning of your book you were talking about, um, and did you start, I think you started this book early this year, didn't you? I mean, it was written, It's everything seems so current when I'm reading it. I'm like, eh, it seems like she just wrote this in, yes, you, yes. in February wrote, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I started in February um, and it was finished by April. The draft was finished. So it was six, six weeks with, with another couple of weeks of tweaking. We had it's really, amazing. really bad snow in February and we were actually snowed in, not snowed in to the point where we couldn't get out, but I didn't want to take the car out. It was that bad on the roads. Right. And I'm sat in and I had had commitments, which I'd canceled. So I found myself with these three days and I thought, I'm going to write a little ebook. That was the original intention. And uh, I started to write this little ebook mm -hmm. based on the question, why are individuals being um, pushed off social media? Uh, and if you read the book, you'll see how that organically progressed into Stargate Ascension. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was the part that really uh, caught me in the beginning, because as a content creator on YouTube, I have to be very aware of what we discuss, what words trigger certain things. And your book actually gets into that, how they will try to suppress us, but ultimately they can't stop the information from getting out. And one no. of the things that really resonated with me was that they are using like algorithms to do their work for them. And they can be circumvented, circumnavigated, if you will. So we can still get the information out because uh, it's just navigating their AI, that's sort of their watchdog that they're using. And if we're careful, we, we don't have to worry about being suppressed to, you know, to the point of getting kicked off. You know, once you hit a certain size, I, I suppose you're getting a lot of attention and you could have a, a person actually get in there and uh, take your case, if you will. But uh, for a lot of the smaller channels like this, I think we're small enough that if we're careful, we can easily navigate through this whole thing. And that's why I recommend anybody get uh, monetized. Even if you don't want to put ads all over there, like I just put the skippable ads on there just for the sole purpose of seeing if I trigger the algorithm. And uh, you can tell if, if you've triggered it, you can sort of learn it and learn how to keep your little money sign green to know, you know when you're starting to get their attention. And when I was reading your book, I, I realized that that was one of those things I sort of had uh, intuitively learned to get around the uh, the suppression that they're trying to do. And it's not hard to do at all. You can just still get the information out without sort of getting their attention and having them sort of try to shut you down or whatever. And we will yeah. win ultimately is how the nine explain it, that they can't shut yeah. us down. There's too much information. No. Well, the star seeds also have a language. They're able to, and that's very much started in the truther community. Um, there's a sort of code, really, that star seeds catch on very quickly when they're being spoken to in code. So, for example, you could create content and use a different title that's going to let people know the content of your content without giving a title that's going to flag the algorithms. Mm -hmm. So, and others, other star seeds are able to see that. Um, and then I always talk about there'll always be a back door. The back door now is pretty much the front door, which was something they recently told me. The back door was alternative media, the new media, you know, YouTube and, and, and social media and, and similar. 
with the front door being mainstream um, and if they kick you off one platform there'll always be a way back in for you but now they're saying that the, the front door media is the alternative media now whether that's actually become evident in 3d maybe somewhat but within the higher dimensional uh, pre-matter state so i'm looking at um a particular geometry that sets as a pre-manifestation um creation code mm -hmm. that has already set as alternative media being the front door and mainstream media being the back door because the star seeds are the individuals looking for information. They are the ones that are um, sort of leading social media, if you like, and people follow them. They're the ones that are presenting as authentic and genuine. And so individuals, they gravitate towards authenticity and individuals that are genuine. And they're starting to see the, the, you know, the old front door media as completely inauthentic, you know, fake news. So people are very, very um, aware on that level. Totally, yeah. In fact, if I see anything on mainstream media, I'm like, I, I just look at it completely differently. You know, I'm like, what agenda are they trying to push here? And oh, oh yeah. they want us to believe that, so it must not be that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's strange yeah. the way you can sh totally shift, and you know, and it's sad, really, because so many people the asleep people are still looking at that as it's the main source. Yes. You know? Yes, they, they are. But as you said earlier, with every uh, Stargate moment, as in these equinoxes and uh, these solstices, there's a whole bunch of new people that are waking up. It is a knock-on effect. It's a domino effect. And people are waking up all the time. So, um, you know, with social media, you've got people perhaps have got like, say, for example, a Facebook profile. And a lot of the people on that profile will be their friends and family uh, that perhaps are completely in 3D, but they're going to, if they're an aware starseed, they're going to have, you know, even if it's just a handful of other starseeds on there too. So when they post information, uh, what's actually happening with that is some people are not seeing the the uh, 4D and 5D information, the true, inf they, they can't see it. They see it with their eyes, but they're not registering it psychologically. So they'll scroll through Facebook and it's completely invisible. You know, and I find that on mine. I can post my videos on my my site that is, uh, I have a Facebook site, you know, for family and friends that I've known since school that are predominantly 3d i have the odd 5d friend on there but predominantly 3d and i'll post something about my video or or something that's going on and there'd be no likes whatsoever and then i'll post like a picture of my cat or of my grandchildren like all these likes and comments but that scenario which is with many people it is changing because there's always a way if you go down to, to the 3D level, and, and it's often tailored to the individual, there will be a concern, worry, issue, or focus within every 3D individual. And that is the higher dimensional aspect of themselves, the guidance, the guardian angel, if you like, moving them always towards this higher expression, because that's the frequency of this planet at the moment. So if you are working with an individual, you can find that concern, worry, or focus. And it might be their health, it might be uh, their exercise, it might be that they're planning uh, a big event like a wedding. There's always a way to come in and start off with something that will lead to an awakening. So there's always an opening within people. Having said that, there are some that are completely shut and that's because they're surrounded by traumas and they're constantly being triggered with those sub uh, subconscious traumas and they're perpetuating themselves constantly within a cycle a negative cycle so those people are sort of stuck if you like and no matter how many clues and 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 how many sort of awakening triggers come their way they're stuck in a spiral but those people you know that every, every chance is being presented to them as well not everyone is going to go through this process on a linear level not everyone will experience the 5d or, or the 4d and not everyone is going to um move out of this you know double helix configuration within the dna 
but the, the, the idea or the hope of the higher dimensions, the plan, our plan, ours plus extraterrestrials and, and all of us together within the light, our plan is that as many as possible will go through this process. And if they don't, then there will be a recycling or um, there will be a rebirth or whatever expression you want to use. And there will be another chance. Everybody goes through essentially, eventually, every soul goes through this climb of energy at some point. It's all always happens to everyone. Uh, one of the things that I'm just getting into in your book is uh, the false light matrix. And it's been coming up other places. Um, and I guess it's sort of, it's the other side of the coin of what we're trying to, we're trying to ascend, but it's, I guess it's, it's coming up with discernment to, to tell the difference between, like you were just talking earlier with the Mandela effect, there's technology and then there's organic ways to jump timelines. And it's sort of, I guess, tapping into our discernment to tell the difference between the organic and the false light matrix. Is there any tips you have for that? Well, the nine would say is, when you are perceiving light, then you are standing in a perception and you are saying, this is false light and this is organic light and you're seeing it. Now that's a linear perception of this, these constructs. The way to tell the difference, if you like, between false light and organic light is not to sit and perceive these lights as if they're outside of you, but to draw them in and say, I create my light. I choose to create organic light. I choose to create an organic matrix. I am an organic matrix. So you bring yourself into the center of creation, if you like. You are the one who takes the power. You are the magician. So if you look at something in a passive way, like, is it this light or that light? I don't know. I'm, I'm passive. It's like, is it A or B? I can't tell. You become it. It's like, I know I am the organic light. I am this light. I create this light. I create this matrix. It is me. It is my right to be this. I am this. You take the power. You become the magician. You take the central point within that sacred wheel. So that's the perspective you would want to take first and foremost. But then you can look at perception. And perception when you're looking at these two matrix systems will bring you back down to that resonance experience I spoke about before. It's a feeling that the sight, the look, that the sound is just another expression of that perception. So again, it's my name is Shane. My name is John. This is organic light. This is an organic matrix this is a false light matrix we feel it within our resonance that's the second step the first step would be to take the creation to be the magician to be the matrix it's like you are not passive in this reality you're only passive when you think you are so you will have people who will say don't trust white light it's going to be false you go through get taken through this this false tunnel and when you come out the other side you're going to be sort of eaten by these dark entities not to say that that's not true from the perspective that they're viewing they're correct in what they're saying they're correct in giving that warning but when you stay within that reality and know that that's false light and there's these beings waiting to sort of eat your soul or whatever and shove you back into 3D against your will and throw you back into a prison planet, you become passive. You become something that's floating through this huge, huge matrix that's completely controlled by these godlike beings and you have no say. That's where you take yourself. You take yourself into victim, passive place. You are simply an experiencer of a higher reality that you know nothing about. And that's all true. But what are you really? You are source. You are that God. You are that higher self. You are that multidimensional being. It's all within you and within your DNA. So therefore, you take the, the empowerment. That's what it means to be empowered. You take that empowerment and you say, whilst there are these false matri matrices, these false lights, I bypass these with my own empowerment and with my own knowing, for I am the creator. 
I created this matrix in the first place. I created all of this. So, and we don't do this within a God complex state. There must be humility or we are outside of that balanced place we want to be in. And I, you will meet people within the spiritual movement that very much sort of, I'm the reincarnation of so-and-so. I'm a really high soul. Oh, no, no, seriously, I'm very high. My guides are the highest guides ever. You will get, you will find these people, bless them. It's, an, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's part of their awakening. They still come out of 3D. But when you're in the God complex, you know, I could sit here and say, you know, I am empowered. I'm Magenta Pixie. I've written this amazing book. There's such amazing knowledge in this. This, this. this will trigger you. It will activate your DNA. You must buy it. You know, that's not how somebody needs to take that space. It's, it's all about humility and sharing and empowerment at the same time. And that's authenticity. And you can tell when somebody has that balance. And that's why people are drawn to others who are like that. People want to listen to someone who's expressing themselves in a way that they wish to be or that they are, which is loving and caring and thinking about other people, wanting to help them, but also has a strong sense of boundary, boundaries, a strong sense of self as well. You can't be giving and giving. Like with my book, I've had people say, Magenta, you, you channeled this for free. Why don't you just give it away? Why are you selling your book? It's disgusting that you're selling your book. I, I, you need to give that to me for free. It's going to help me ascend. And what I would say to those people and what I would say to anyone who's creating something is, wouldn't it be lovely to give all the books away for free? I would love to be able to do that. But in a 3D reality, there is a construct that we have to live within, which is to do with money and finance and everything else. And we have to just balance everything as best as we can. So we might be able to say, well, you know what? I can give this away for free and I can give that away for free because I'm loving and I'm caring. But this I need to, you know, have a, an exchange for. It's This is how it, it must be. It's the same with the light, the matrix, the false light, the organic light. You've got your boundaries as well. You know, it's like, yes, I'm aware of that false light matrix and I will bypass this. I want to help others as well who are being caught within that matrix. And you can't judge those who are actually working for the false light either, which is a really tough one. They have their reality as well. They're there for a reason. As I said, the negative entities are there that teach us as much as the positive. That's because we're in a reality of polarity. We wouldn't learn the things we're learning if we didn't have polarity but we need boundaries as well. So those boundaries say, stop. I don't want that in my reality. I'm not having that on my planet. You service the self groups and all you ETs controlling them. We're not having this anymore. We're star seeds. We're going through ascension. We love you. We're not putting up with that anymore. We're going to a different timeline and you are going to stop what you're doing and you're going to be exposed and you have karma to pay off. Do you see where we have to sort of go with empowerment? This sort of, humility and love and caring and sharing without burning ourselves out and still taking this you know assertiveness at the same time it's it's a very fine balance and you don't really have to work at it because when you move into that my name is shane that in that sort of resonance when you know who you are my birth name is shane my higher self name is whatever it may be i am a starseed i am ascending when you take that knowing that gives you this vertical pillar of light, which is an anchor into all the dimensions. It's your, it's your focus and it's your boundaries and it's everything. And then you build that geometric structure from that. So that is the place to be when it comes to looking at the false light matrix and the organic one and telling the difference between the two. It's working in that um, multi-dimensional place of balance. That's beautiful because that's one of the things I've I finally got to the point of being able to trust that the things that are out of my hands are taken care of. Uh, if I can, it's almost like you become immune to the dark energies at one point. If you can keep yourself in a certain state of mind of like what you were just saying, because I just came out of a situation where I learned so much. A lot of people would have looked at it as a mistake or a bad path I went down, but for me, it was just as important as the good paths I go down because I learned so much and I was thankful for the situation. And I came out the other side 
with more experience and more knowledge, and I was better for it. And I think uh, when we can understand that we're sort of in this dualistic uh, reality, and uh, like you were just saying, we, we learn from the negative and from the positive. And if it's all positive, you can't really learn from that. You can't be a hero without there being a villain, so to speak. Yeah. So it's all necessary and part of the uh, overall thing. But yeah, we can if we can keep our vibes high, not getting sucked into the 3D and being aware of our emotions and how we're resonating, at some point, you know, we just, we're dealing with ankle biters at that point. They, they can't really get up to the level that we're at, you know, and you're, you know that you're yeah. protected and you can trust that there's yep. help out there, I guess. That's so true. It's like immunity to the dark energies. People perceive that as I'm never going to see a dark entity again. They're never going to come anywhere near me. I'm, I'm never going to experience anything negative or dark because I'm completely immune. What that mean? the immunity doesn't mean that you won't come across that. What it means is that you can work with it within yourself. You can integrate it and balance it. A few uh, months ago, um, in a lucid dream, I actually had an entity, a dark, malevolent entity, sort of grab hold of my astral body, if you like. I've worked with you know, out of body experiences, instead of coming out of the, the body into a, an out of body experience in a blissful way, this entity sort of grabbed hold of, of my foot, my astral foot, and was trying to pull me out of my astral body. So I'm not immune from having a dark entity try to grab my body and pull me out. But was I afraid? No, because I knew instantly, because of my training and my work, I knew instantly what it was doing, why it was there, woke me up straight away and i sort of worked to remove that entity from my space but absolute gratitude and then there's a respect between the two of you and then i knew and i'm like so thankful because if he hadn't have come or her or whatever <laughs> whatever gender this this entity was if it hadn't come to me and done and done that to me then i wouldn't have been able to put right something that would have potentially caused a disharmonious um, situation between me and someone I care about. I instantly knew because when there is a negative entity, a dark entity, a negative experience, you're not a victim. It hasn't just been done to you. On some level, you have called that in. But at the same time, when you say that, that can be perceived as very condescending to people. When somebody's going through something really awful and you say to them, you know, oh, well, you, you created it. You create your reality. You called it in. That's why you're suffering, because you chose it. That is not what that person wants to hear. It's an insult to them. You know, they don't need to hear that. And they would be right, because on another level, someone is doing something to you. On one level, a dark entity tried to pull my astral body out of my body. That was a horrible thing for that entity to do. So I could have reacted as, oh my goodness, there's an entity trying to pull my astral body out. I could have got scared. I could have got upset. I could have got angry. I could have decided to turn against my spiritual work. And why is this negative entity visiting me? But the integration took place because gratitude thank you for coming. I know why you're here. I'm going to put right what I could have put right yesterday and make sure that everything is okay. And I was very grateful because it allowed me to remain in a harmonious state. I had done something that was, I felt was right at the time, but it obviously was out of alignment. And this entity came to me to show me. Now on another level, one could say that's my subconscious mind, my uh, subconscious experience perceived this uh, negative act that I thought was positive, but was ultimately potentially negative. I perceived that negative act as an entity coming to get me. It's all the same thing. And it doesn't matter which way you look at it. You know, I've had people say to me before, negative entities are separate things from traumas. They're correct. They are within a third and fourth dimensional perspective. That is the truth. But when you get into 5D, they're the same thing. A trauma and a negative entity and a negative action and eating the wrong food and swearing, cussing, behaving badly is all the same thing. You know, so there's all these different dimensional truths within the different dimensions. And the, uh, the idea here is balance, which is why the nine speak about this sacred wheel, because we take the central points and then we choose 
which direction we wish to go in and, and how we want to express that part of ourselves. That's totally true. That's one of the things that I, I realized early on, uh, actually before I started the channel, is how everyone is really right from their perspective, you know, and that you have to sort of just accept them for where they're at. You're, and that's true. And that's, that's why the whole the channel name, you know, that I got was really all about that. It's sort of realizing that if you can get out of where you're at and put yourself in this other person's place, you could see that they're right. Everyone's right from their point of view. And it's sort exactly. of this higher perspective is where you have to get to before you can understand that. But that's really the reason why I don't cover a lot of things that are, are really interesting, like politics and things like that, because a lot of that stuff, if you don't view it from the higher perspective, you're going to get triggered in a big way. So oh, yes. everybody's not there. So you just, I just have no. to avoid it because, you know, I'll get all this hate mail and stuff. And, you know, and yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> I made the same mistake of talk, trying to explain what was going on in the political scene and got so much backlash that I thought, well, I'm not going to stop explaining because people need to know what's happening, you know, and uh, what one can see within that sort of higher dimensional plan but i think um sometimes you have to sort of take a step back and i think unbiased and on the fence is a really really good title for your show because you are in the central point when you're unbiased and on the fence that's what it means it doesn't mean you're indecisive right. it means you are taking the central point and you're under you're seeing the multiple perspectives you're not trying to push your ideas on anyone else. You're just sort no, of observing it and you're accepting not it. Jumping you know? off the fence over to this side, because mm -hmm. when you do that, you're you're in an enemy with those people over there. They're in the opposing place to you. You're in a polarity game. You jump over to this side of the fence. You're in a polarity game. When you're on the fence, you're not in polarity. Exactly. You are seeing the bigger picture, and that's where we must be unbiased and on the fence. And that's funny that you said that because it's one of the things like, you know, when we look at the, uh, let's call them the darkies so we don't trigger, trigger anything, but these people at the top running everything and a lot of people, you know, want to do very bad things to these people, you know, uh, in the streets and, you know, and maybe they deserve it at a 3D level or whatever, but from a higher perspective, these people are deceived and need love too and uh, they just got caught up in their world and you can really see how if we were put in their same position that they were raised in uh, in that sort of environment how we could have ended up the same way they're really no different than us so to speak and they really need love too and uh, they're as much uh, in this game as we are I mean they're they seem like they're running it but at the higher perspective they're gonna have to go through things too wouldn't you say Oh, good heavens, yes, absolutely. I mean, I can understand people being annoyed and wanting retribution and revenge and all those things. I completely understand that. And they are correct from that point of view because these dark workers, if you like, have done um, very heinous, awful things. Um, and th But then when you look at that service to self-structure, those dark workers, there's such a complex energy there there's so many different levels there as well you've got these individuals that were sort of um victims thrown into it as well as perpetrators of the system controllers of the system you've got people trying to get out of the system and you've got a broken system where you've got several groups that are now actually against one another so it it's such a complicated structure to actually just stand there and say i want revenge is a 3d reaction so you are and you are going to see that within people and the more that they learn about the crimes that have been committed there will be individuals that are sort of shouting for retribution and they would be right from the perspective of the third dimensional level and what's good and what's bad and what's right and what's wrong but then when we raise up into this fourth dimensional viewpoint and fifth dimensional viewpoint, we see different perspectives. We can't make a decision about our 3D reality, about this earth, unless we do take that higher perspective. We, we can't decide from the 3D perspective because we only have a forward view. It's like we're stood looking at something that's the same size as us. We can't see it all. We can only see one view of it. When we go above it and look down upon it, we see it all and we can move direction and see everything. Then we can make a proper informed decision and 
there is no decision to be made from that point of view anyway, because everything flows and it's already been decided. So we take all these different viewpoints and it's, it's, it's a difficult one for people to get their heads around when you're taking a multi-perspective viewpoint. And it can be taxing upon one's thought process can be taxing upon the brain just like working out at the gym it's taxing on your muscles to think this way long term every day can be taxing upon the mind so we need to take these breaks as you were saying go outside sit in nature relax and flow move in and out which is why we have the wave so this bit this higher energy is wonderful but we're not supposed to ignore these little slumps these little limbo states that that's our little hiatus where we can think oh take a bit of time off i can be a bit 3d because 3d is great as well there's great fun to be had in 3d as yeah. well as a horrendously awful experience as well it's a polarity it is an extreme polarity and if we can jump over to um, a positive polarity while still keeping a balance we can experience 3d in a really really lovely way and there's some great gifts within 3d but the true gift is multi-dimensionality that's where we find the true gems and that's when we experience 3d 4d 5d and beyond all at the same time someone asked the question about uh the the nine are they um are they actually on their own ascension path path, path like going up their density levels like the law of one talks about like you know everybody's always constantly growing they are yes um from the perspective of them being sixth dimensional beings then they're moving into the seventh dimension and that's the presentation i work with but because they're sixth dimensional moving into seventh dimensional there is a um there is more of a unified field around them as a construct so they present multi-dimensionally so there is an aspect to them that is source and they are aware that they are source when they're not in communication with me and i'm not communicating with them they're source they are a unified field of all they only come into the sixth dimension moving into the seventh and they're, they're pretty much in early stage seventh actually now but when they come into that that's because they're in communication with me so they take form and the 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 best form that they can take for us so that or certainly for me anyway but for where i am is where the collective ascension uh, predominant level is there are ascending individuals that are in a higher dimensional state within 3d um, but i'm kind of where everyone else is really and so what they would do is they would come down far enough for me to be able to communicate with them as a construct without coming down too far so that i don't learn so they're going far enough away from me dimensionally so that i uh, i'm able to expand to the absolute point that i can um but when they're not talking to me when they're not in communication with me they are source so the answer to that question is from the perspective of them being an individualized construct communicating with me they are going through an ascension process yes but from the point of view of them as a as their true self being, if you like, when not a construct, there is no ascension there. It is one pulse. That would be the, the response to that question. <laughs> That's funny. It does really always come back to perspective, doesn't it? Because like on, yes, one, it on one hand, it's like uh, whatever my source is, is your source and we're sharing the source, but you know, it's such a fractal energy that yes. it gets individualized, but really it's not. Uh, when you can really get that highest perspective, you can really see we are really all one. And uh, it's yes. a mind trip, but it is all it's about perspective. It's a mind trip, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been really wonderful. I am in, so enjoying the book and I, di I didn't even know there's a Mandela Effect chapter, so I can't wait to get to that. That's gonna be awesome. Um, and uh, for those coming in late, cause there's 282 people in here, uh, for those coming in late, I do have uh, Magenta's links below. There is actually, uh, if you go to the bottom link uh, where it says Magenta's newest book, you can go to the web page that has it where you can buy it. But there's also a PDF with like the first three chapters in it. So go and read that and enjoy it. And uh, you'll be hooked like I was because I read the first three chapters. I like, immediately got the rest of the uh, the book. And uh, uh, in effect, uh, on uh, Kindle is that you can see where people's highlighted other things. I didn't know 
uh, you know, it says 30 something people highlighted this section. And I just noticed oh. that this morning. I'm like, what is that little dotted line there? And I'm, so you can tell, like, it, it's cool because I, I guess it's sort of interactive in a way. It, it lets you know what, you know, so many people. I, I didn't notice anything under 30. So maybe it's over 30. It starts telling you people highlighted a certain section or whatever. So that's a, a really cool feature. It's almost like you're sharing a book with someone. You can see what they highlighted that they thought were into, uh, was interesting or whatever. But I love the wow. book. I'd love to have you back sometime. And, uh, you know, so uh, in the meantime, I will definitely finish up the rest of the book. And I can tell that I need to go back and read the first two. Is there two more books before this? It is. And, you know, not everybody needs to read those, although they were written in a kind of a, an order. And I didn't know, obviously, when I was bringing the information down, that there would be a, a sort of a, a progression with, with the information. I had no idea. Um, people have often asked me if you have to read them in order or if you're reading this one, you should go back and read the others. What I would say is to someone who's somewhat of a beginner um, it, it, with spirituality, obviously, a, a beginner probably wouldn't read masters of the matrix anyway it's sort of not really beginners level to be honest it's a bit more than that because it's kind of 5d but what i mean is somebody who's still thinking somewhat linear and is um wanting to learn then i would say at that level read masters of the matrix first then divine architecture and the starseed template and then infinite helix but if you are already aware of 5d you're understanding these perspectives you're working with the with unity you don't need to do that it's it's simply a choice you can jump straight to infinite helix and if you want to read the others um you can but there's no there's no need to have to read them in order but i'm so glad that you are enjoying the book i absolutely loved writing it it was such a wild experience because everything happened you know, so quickly with the other two, it was like, you know, I, I'd get a break so it was every few days and, you know, I'd come back to a bit of writing and, but this was like constant and it was, it was incredibly intense, but wonderful. I've really enjoyed taking some time off, but um, I can't wait to write the next one now. <laughs> I can't wait to get started. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a really b big book. And, you know, when I saw the, uh, the, the promo video you had for it, and it was talking about unlocking codes and stuff. And I was like, how, I wonder how that could work or whatever. And I just thought maybe it would happen behind the scenes and I wouldn't notice how it was working. But I, I definitely see how it was working because it was like I was reading things that were confirming thoughts I had. And, and it was just sort of tying things together, thoughts I've had, knowings, downloads, and things like that. So it's very, on a very conscious level, I can see how it's helping me connect things together and make sense of things that... Uh, just seem like random thoughts in my mind, if you will. So I really appreciate the work that you put into this. I, I can tell it was a lot. It's packed full of information, and I'm totally loving it. Like I told you before we came on, uh, the reason I haven't made it all the way through it is because I've been actually, I'll read something, and I'll think about it, ponder it for a while, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go back and read that again because I'll, I'll feel like my brain was really unlocking things while uh, after I got done reading it, and I'd have to go back and reread it. And it would, I'd get more from it each time. So you're probably getting stuff from it each time you read it, are you not? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. And, I, and I, I know that sometimes I need to go back and, and, and read some more. The nine say to me, the light is catching. And this is about the uh, radiation of the DNA, the, the ability for DNA to radiate. Um, so we energetically connect with others within that sort of quantum field. So whatever I was experiencing, within my energetic system when bringing the information down those who are receptive which is the star seeds going through an ascension process will all be receptive they go through the same thing that i went through as i was bringing the information down but that doesn't mean that like me when i was actually downloading i'm doing this 24 7. it doesn't mean you have to do that it's a really good idea to read a few pages and stop if you're someone who can go intensively and just read the whole book in one sitting then that's fine but other people may need to read a, a little bit a chapter at a time a few pages at a time and go away and assimilate it doesn't matter how it's done because the point is that when you're connecting with the information and reading the words you are moving into this non-locational place where the light is catching 
and that's what the nine call the infinite helix and the emerald flame uh, network or uh, configuration or um, stargate or, or, or whatever word they use it's it's like um it's like a, a sort of a a unity a unity field that you come into so you could come into that i when i'm writing when i'm when i'm actually downloading the information everyone reading it is in the same place as me it's like we're all reading it at the same time is what i'm saying you could read this book in 10 years but you'd be in the same time space that I was in when I'm writing it. We all come together because there's no location within that energy. It's, it's non-locational in time and space. Yeah, and so, it never, it became very evident what we were just talking about moments ago of how we're really one at a certain perspective. You can, absolutely, yeah. and you can totally tell because as I'm reading through this and I'm getting things that, and it's things are becoming more clear. I definitely recommend everybody read it because I can totally see what you're saying about this whole retro causality. Somebody reading it in 10 years will be brought yes. back to this moment because like you said, time is an illusion, you know. I could see, I could see people reading it as I was bringing, I could see them all. You know, I didn't necessarily zoom in on each individual, but I could see their consciousness and where they were in the world and how many people and what time I could see that, um, which I do with the, the, the videos uh, as well. When I am bringing forward information for a YouTube video, I can see the people that are listening to the videos. And That's really cool amazing. because you can see how, I mean, they say that, you know, if we just worry about ourselves and get ourselves where we need to be and, you know, disseminate the information as we can or whatever, it seeps into the subconscious of everyone and, you know, you don't have to sort of wake everybody up. It's just we're, we're, we're evolving as that's what the star seeds are about. We're like yes. seeds planted all over that's sprouting up and helping raise the consciousness of everyone. Yeah. And I can totally tap into that while reading the book and see how anyone else reading it is doing the same thing. And just even the information being shared on these different channels and stuff like that, it's all feeding into this star seed system that's helping yes. the whole planet evolve it's it's amazing to see it at work because it yes. sounds and like we woo -woo, you know when you <laughs> we, we we literally are seeds of stars and in the book it explains how we're literally star seeds literally it's not a metaphor it's not a, a pretty little name right. for people who, who came from the stars we are literally seeds for stars and it explains in in the book how we are um so a lot of this information that came through for the book was completely new to me and um you know so I, I, as you can tell it was intense because <laughs> i'm getting these downloads and i'm like wow goodness me and I, like i said it would be all night and i would wake up in the morning with all this information and think how am i going to write this down and uh you know, I just sit there with my laptop all day and sometimes wouldn't even eat any anything because <laughs> I just couldn't, I couldn't get the information out fast enough, which is why I've taken the last month off. I needed that, that space. Yeah, because it was so intense and I, I, I needed to take a hiatus before. And that's the same thing with the energy. I think we're kind of on a bit of a global hiatus right now. We've come down from that high energy of the lion's gate we're in that sort of um, assimilating phase, processing phase. There's things going on, but we're sort of down here collectively in this little assimilating place. We're having that hiatus. It's like the calm before the storm, but it's not a storm. It's the calm before the next rays of energy, which um, seems to be the autumn equinox. Some people are talking about the 9th of September being a 9-9 Stargate. I, I haven't had that information myself, but I may get it, but I haven't yet. But certainly the autumn equinox is a really big spike. So that's what's happening to us um, individually within our, within our own lives. And we might be going through that at the same time as others or different times because these, these lines, can some of us can be up here while some of us are down here mm -hmm. Then we're meeting again. So you might see a friend who says, oh, the energy is amazing. It's so high, I can hardly sleep. And you felt nothing. You'd be like, oh, I felt on a lull but you're still going through it together because you'll both come back up. But um, we're doing that individually and collectively at the same time. So there's a collective way and an individual one, as I said earlier, and um, we need to sort of go with these, these patterns of energy. 
Definitely. That reminds me of this, uh, uh, with the Law of One website you could go to and put your birth date in there and it would show you like your emotion and your adeptness and your uh, physical energy and you would have these sort of sine waves and sometimes you'd have everything up, you know, and you'd feel high on life and then sometimes maybe your energy would be real low but your adeptness would be really high and, you know, so we've got all of those and then how we mesh together not only individually, but as a collective. And then when you throw in the planetary stuff, you know, they're all over the place from a 3D perspective, you know. Amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I, I need to get that link. That. Yeah, <laughs> I need to find that link. There's another one that the ninth wave link where it, the unity wave that comes in shows. But that's for everyone. That's not just, uh, it doesn't go off of your birthday. So that's really Excellent. neat. Yeah. So it's been awesome having you. Um Definitely want to uh, get that book, you guys. It's the links in the description and the links to, to her uh, YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for taking the time. It's what is it like seven thirty there for you at night? Uh, well, I've lost track of time. I don't know what yeah. time did we start. I think it's yeah, seven thirty. So. It must be. Yeah, I so it's the clock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's evening there for you. I do appreciate yeah. you taking the time out uh, of your day to join us here, and uh, you're welcome back anytime you want. So. Lovely. Lovely, I will. Come back, definitely. Well, lots of love and light to everybody in the chat, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much, Magenta. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> if you'd like to support the work I do, go to paypal.me slash UOTF. Thanks.